Pride, we are recording. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our event tonight. And our entire purpose for tonight is to let's get growing. That's right. We're here tonight to get growing. And we want to learn about how to be a tower garden farmer. Yeah, and so that's 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 our whole our entire goal for tonight. Um, so if you just logged in and you don't know, we're asking everyone to please mute yourself. Also, we're asking you that if and someone invited you, if you have not already done so, to put in the chat who invited you to the call. Barbara, could you make sure everyone is muted? Okay, sure will. All right, thank you. All right, and so I want you all to sit back. I want you to enjoy yourselves and we're going to have at the appropriate time an opportunity for you to ask questions. If you have questions, you can also put them in the chat as well and we'll answer those questions at the appropriate time. So once again, our goal tonight and purpose is to let's get growing and how to become a tower garden farmer, all right? Next slide, Barbara. We're here. It's not showing on my screen. Okay. Do you see the screen now? No. Are you all able to see the next screen? No. Do you see the screen at all? <laughs> yeah. We yes, can. I can. We can see I can it. see it, but just not a different picture. Yeah. Do you see where it says we need three volunteers? No. Okay, is it on the very first slide? So many our fellow Americans are on the front lines of this pandemic. Okay, and it is progressing from my end, so let me. That's why I went to the new system. So is, the, is my screen blank? No, we uh, see, let's. We see, let's get growing. How okay. to become a tarot garden farmer. Okay, do you see the next screen now? No. No, so okay. that's okay. That's, that's okay. We'll we need, yeah, go ahead. And so we, we need three volunteers. Don't be afraid. Volunteer for what? So volunteer. We'll volunteer. <laughs> yeah, so, so Gay Lowry, she just volunteered. Who else okay. is going to volunteer? We'll be later. Very okay, Pat Parsons. She said and, she'll be one. And Miss Johnson, we'll get you to volunteer. Okay, Miss Johnson. So Pat Parsons, gay, and Miss Johnson. All right. Do you all see my screen now? We've got yes. our three volunteers. We've got that screen up. So we, now we know that we are unhealthy. Okay. One in four people will die from heart disease. One in two women and one in three men will develop cancer. And, and we see that every day when we watch the news, read, you know, for those of us that still read the newspaper or even look on the internet, uh, one in three will have diabetes by 2050 and one in five children will unfortunately be obese. A lot of this is caused by environmental toxins, which are causing us causing us to have these problems in an increasing manner. Examples of environmental toxins are pollution, water uh, contaminants, pesticides, prescription medication, drugs, chemicals, skin care products, hair care That's products, and plastics. Food quality is also decreasing. Not, along, not only are the other things causing us to have these problems, but the fruit, food quality is decreasing. More than 50% of Americans, 50% um, of Americans eat the food that we eat as processed food. Preserve, they have, you know, different it's synthetic, the GMOs, the less nutrition, trans fat, flavor enhancers, a variety of things is causing our foods to decrease. Um, broccoli at some point will lose its, its value as well. I'm not value, but lose its nutritional value as well. Um, now, what can we do to help this? We can be healthier by exercising, sleeping seven to eight hours a night, manage our stress, drink more water, and use safer products, and definitely eat more real food. 
Now, with that being said, I am going to now pass the baton um, on to my next presenter, and that will be none other than Barbara Davis. Actually, that would be Lisa Hale. I mean, Lisa, excuse me, Lisa, I apologize. Lisa, I'm trying to take your, your shine away. No, I wouldn't let you. <laughs> but nice try. Hey, everybody, I'm Lisa Hale. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. So as Tamara was just saying, you know, there's um, those six core values, and uh, it's it's very difficult to get, especially the eat the real food, food part. And that's kind of what we're here today on is uh, let's focusing on fruits and vegetables. We know that experts agree that most diseases are preventable with good nutrition. I mean, it's like 70, 70 to 80 percent. Um, even heart disease, diabetes, they say is preventable with, you know, a, a healthy diet, uh, lifestyle, again, the core values that we just said, you know, manage stress, uh, drink your water, um, things like that. So um, it's definitely focused in the whole food uh, series more than it was many years ago. So we talk about this juice plus and a lot of people are like, what is juice plus? A lot of people think it's a juice. Really, it's just whole foods that are harvested at the ripe of peakness and then um, put into powder form, uh, minus the pesticides, herbicides, sugar, salt. Um, so diabetes uh, patients can take it, uh, hypertension, blood pressure, because uh, of the no salt, the low sodium. And then, um, you know, anywhere from a woman who's expecting the baby or a cancer patient. So I um, love that Juice Plus can actually, in this powder form, uh, plant powder produce can have such power for uh, people really, as we call it, from uh, womb to tomb, right? So uh, plant powder is just put into capsules. We do have really nice soft chewables. Um, and then we have the orange uh, slides coming up later about the omega blends. So when we talk about one simple change, you know, so many people say, you know, I'm going to eat right. And uh, let's face it, they're lying. Um, everybody tries, but it doesn't, it just doesn't happen. Uh, you can tell yourself this over and over again, and maybe you'll, maybe you'll do better eating an apple every day. You know, that's great, but it's the variety of, uh, and a little bit of a lot. And that's what juice plus is literally just one simple change. Uh, plant-based omegas came out, um, about three years ago. They did a five-year study on how to, um, remove the fish. Um, I think I heard that it takes like four pounds of fish to scrape out like a tablespoon of uh, omega oil. So uh, there's a lot of omega oil uh, caps and, and, and pills out there and you wonder kind of what's in it, right? Or you're, or you're burping up fish, which I did and that was disgusting. So I got off of those. Well, when this came out, um, they went straight to the source. So we get rid of the, the, middle, uh, the middle guy, which is the fish. And so we have... Um, uh, algae oil, the sea buckthorn oil, which is actually from ne uh, in Nepal. Um, I mean, very uh, climate controlled um, plant, but it's 100% plant-based, pure and uh, sustainable, full spectrum of omegas. Many people are overdosing on like an omega-3, and this is actually um, omega-3, 5, 6, 7, 9, so it's a variety blend. But what the key is um, focusing on the heart, the brain, joints, skin, and eyes, um, cold breast vegan capsules. So those have been, um, so many people have, have felt the benefits of that. Juice Plus shakes, um, you know, I'm a, a fitness trainer for 39 years, own a gym and um, did many shakes over the years and never have I been as satisfied as I, as I am with the taste, with the blendability, and then also um, just the power and the fuel in the complete shakes. Complete shakes are um, gluten dairy free. They check up all the boxes, guys. You know the non-GMO ingredients, uh, vegan, gluten dairy free, low glycemic, and what that means is diabetics can take this, so it doesn't spike their blood pressure. So we have um, diabetics sometimes uh, that'll want to take it at night to then stabilize their um, sugar. The best part about Juice Plus is, and you can ask Suri on your um, phone or on your. Uh, uh, computer is uh it's the most nutraceutical research nutraceutical uh product in the world okay by thousands of doctors not just uh some basement uh contributes to cardiovascular won't go through them all but inflammatory everybody hears about inflammation inflammation is really what um uh starts every illness, a cut on your finger to um, illnesses in your body, supports healthy uh, cholesterol, triglycerides, which is um, a, heart, a heart disease, heart attack uh, marker, immune system. I think we've heard immune system for this whole year. Um, and you will always hear an immune system because when you do not support your immune system uh, to respond and uh, ward off 
uh, illnesses to coughs to worse, um, that's when uh, things creep in. And so you definitely want to keep your immune system uh, strong. And then you're Here's Dr. Du Bois at the bottom. There is nothing else available any place in the world with or without a prescription that has been clinically proven to do what Juice Plus has been proven to do. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you, Lisa. And so now for our volunteers, we appreciate you already. Um, we want to just ask three questions. So who was the first volunteer, Tawana? Um, you, were, you were muted. It's okay. Sorry, Gay Lowry. Who was that? Gay Lowry. All right. So the first question goes to you. You all are our honored panel guests tonight. Have you ever considered growing your own food? You can unmute yourself and, and ask and answer, or you can put it in the chat. Yes, yes I do. I, 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 have a, I have a tire garden. Okay. Okay. But before I got my tower garden, I tried growing tomatoes and hay bales. <laughs> that worked, but tower garden's much easier and bigger variety. <laughs> okay, so how long have you been a tower garden grower? <sighs> Five years, maybe. All right. Okay. So that was an easy question for you, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you. Um, who is our second volunteer? It's Pat Parsons. So Pat, you have to unmute yourself, sweetie. There you go. All right. So Pat, this question is for you, or you can answer the question mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. Have you ever mm -hmm. attempted to I start a card? Listen to the. Uh, mm -hmm. no, uh, yes, yes, I did once, but it was so many years ago that I, I just remember that the rabbits and the squirrels ate more than we did. <laughs> Turtles. Did you get through a, a complete growing season? How was it for you? Uh, we we only did the tomatoes and uh, and we did end up getting to eat some, but most most of them were eaten by the critters. So, <laughs> so it's what, what you get that, when you live in the county. Like? What was that feeling like? I, I know I'm throwing in extra questions, <laughs> but what was that feeling like to only grow tomatoes and then share that with half of the um, the forest? It was needless to say it was frustrating. Okay. But it was also it, my son was probably five or six at the time and it was a learning experience for him. Right. So well with that said, with what you did produce, which were only tomatoes, how did that make you feel that you when you were actually growing that, even though you only got tomatoes, how did that make you feel? And well, there, there's nothing better than homegrown tomatoes. So it's like, uh, needless to say, I felt felt great, so. All right, well, thanks for sharing. Who's our third panelist? It's <laughs> Mrs. Johnson. All right, Mrs. Johnson. You get to be uh, answer our third question here, or you can go back and grab one of the others. What barriers have you encountered with trying to start your own garden, if you have tried? I've never tried to start my own garden because I've always lived in an apartment complex. So I feel as if it'll be kind of, it'll be difficult for me to grow um, a garden or grow my own food living inside of an apartment. And I also have a, a, a cat as a pet. So um, I do believe if I try to grow it inside when I come home, it'll be <laughs> knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, assume that you're going to have a lot of questions and you get to see a lot tonight with the towel garden and, and the options that you have. All right, so let's give our three volunteer panelists a hand for volunteering. And for your efforts and your um, willingness to volunteer, you all, the three of you will get prizes tonight. And um, we'll get with the person who invited you so that um, we can make sure we take care of you. So thank you for that. So I have the pleasure in talking about the solution. Um, and I'm gonna send, I'm sending a signal to my, my um, assistant, Carter. He's listening in. So, um, but I have the pleasure tonight in presenting the Tower Garden, which is all is a, I think is a complete, it completes the family of the Juice Plus product line. Okay, so you heard about the capsules and over the 30 um, different 
can mute that for me, just mute it. Um, different variety and the research that's on those capsules. So why not? How fitting is it to throw those in as well, be able to complete the, the family with a towel garden so you can grow your own? Have a little feedback. So I have a pleasure tonight in doing a, a tower tour, but before we do that, I do want to just um, highlight how, how much fun we have. Of course, with children, I have four, a certified health coach, so I'm always teaching and fussing about more veggies. You can see my shirt here, let's get growing. And so how important is it to become a tower garden farmer? I wanna to try to talk about how the importance of it as well as how easy it is, okay? so. How important is it? Okay, when it was just my husband and I, you know, it's just the two of us fussing. Did you eat this? Well, when you add child number one, two, three, four, it takes on a whole new meaning in terms of health. Okay, it goes beyond yourself. It, it meant a little bit more because I know what I'm putting into my body and it's easy for me to, you know, um, juggle different things, but when you bring on those other little ones into your household, and maybe there, there are individuals passing through your household. Maybe you are a caretaker, okay? Maybe you have grandchildren. Maybe you have nieces and nephews. When they come over, it's okay to spoil them with a little, you know, your little knickknack, but how rewarding would it be to be an example to them, to show them better help and, and give that legacy? So that was very important to me. I have a long history of heart disease in my family. I lost my mother, she was only 52, massive heart attack. I lost my dad to cancer and about four other aunts to cancer and heart disease. So I really take health and getting more plants in my diet into my family's diet really serious. So when the tower garden came along, I said, well, and I'm a country girl. I grew up digging fields, fields, pulling and all of that. And so I was like, wow, we tried that. And it was really hard. We got cucumbers one year that was really big. Everything else was just a hit and miss because the soil here where we live in Tennessee is just take years to develop the nutrients in those grounds. And knowing what I even knew about growing, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be hard. For a family of six, it's even harder because I needed more space, more land space. And to, to do all of that, and to work a full-time job, even if I'm at home, I know in homeschooling, that was that just wasn't an option. So I started, and I do have a ground garden, just a little something that I can manage. But what I do, and what I tell other people who have ground gardens, is I supplement. <laughs> supplement. I supplement with the tower garden, and it has made our life. It's changed. It's just been a game changer in terms of how many plants that I can actually not only put into my family's uh, on, the, on the table, but how many that I can actually consume and then teach my our children how to grow so they can see the entire process. And it just takes that burden off. Again, they do know how to grow in the ground as well, but it just gave, it has given us a whole lot of more flexibility and we get way more plants on the variety in, into our diet. So with that said, we're gonna watch a little video that just kind of gives you, cause I know with an event like this, it's kind of hard to cover it all. Kids me back to school. So we're gonna watch a quick little video that's gonna teach us about the tower. Okay. <laughs> state-of-the-art aeroponic vertical garden system uses both water and air to produce more colorful, better tasting, and incredibly nutritious fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Tower Garden has a 20-gallon reservoir at its base that stores the Tower Tonic Nutrient Solution, 
Developed by experts in plant and human nutrition, Tower Tonic Mineral Blend enables superior plant growth and better nutrition from your Tower Garden produce. The Barbara, you need to unmute yourself, sweetie. We can't hear it. Wattage submersible pump. The pump pushes the nutrient solution up through the tower to the top. From there, the nutrient solution drips through the central tower using a special device that evenly cascades the solution over the exposed plant roots. On the journey down the tower, the nutrient solution feeds the roots and becomes highly oxygenated as it cascades gently down the reservoir. This process is continuous, providing fresh oxygen, water, and nutrients to the roots of the plants. This patented aeroponic process enables food crops to grow faster than they would in soil, so they can be harvested more often. And it makes Tower Garden a healthier, easier, smarter way to grow your produce. All right. All right, and so before we take the tour, just know that the Tower Garden is the future of growing. Um, grow your produce on your patio or even indoors. And so right now, and we do this event three times a year, just so you know. Um, so we're gonna kind of tour the indoor towers, but we're also talk about um, the outdoor towers as well. But 98% less water is used, 90% less space, 30% more yield, three times faster, and all the tower garden uh, growers, farmers on, on this call can attest to that. And then it's safe and nutritious. And so you can also see here that we have two towers. There's a tower garden home and the tower garden flex. We won't get into all the details of that um, right now, but they basically operate the same with some slight differences and you can see the person who invited you to this call so they can give you all the specifics to make a better, um, this, for you to make a better decision if you decide to purchase. All right, so at this time we'll step over, get my assistant. All right, make sure you see me. All right, thank you, Carter. And give me thumbs up. I guess I have two views going here. <laughs> Uh, and, and outside um, at the same time. All right. Okay, you should be coming back in. Are we connected? Yes, we can hear you now. I'm sorry, we're having just a little. All right. Can you see me, Carter? All right. Just get back so we can make it. Here we go. All right. So, as you can see here, um, I have two towers indoors. This one is pretty cool, which I. Feels like I have a little. I mean, hey everyone, I I also want to say if you put it on speaker view in the upper right hand corner, if you click on speaker view, you'll be able to get a bigger picture of Barbara's tower gardens. All right, all right, here we go. Sorry about all that. So we have primarily about five or six different types of lettuces that we're growing. I usually, and every um, tower farmer is different. I usually have, um, if you can follow my hands, son. I usually have most of my herbs towards the bottom. It's all about placement. You can see that I need to be selling some of this mint here. <laughs> all right. Basic concept. Um, and I use this tower year round in home, indoors. You can follow my hand here, I have parsley. And if you can go down here, I actually have seedlings. So during the day, I usually put these in the window, but normally at night, I actually, this close enough, I actually put them near the grow light so they can continue to grow and germinate, all right? And we can talk about seedlings next, all right? Follow me around. As you can see here, it's another lettuce variety there. I've grown to love this variety. <laughs> we have um, more parsley. We have romaine, salad um, in a bowl. And you can pretty much do any type of lettuces. You can stay there. We have collards. And just know that the grow light extends out as far as you need for them to be. 
So based on when your plants get larger, you just extend it out. Okay, you make your adjustments there. My collard, um, you can tell when I have to do a big harvest, you don't have to get to the corner. But the collard's here, I'm taking over here. Have more, again, we're a family of six. So you can control how much you wanna grow, when you wanna grow it. You can still see here that we have a lot of even empty pots because we're constantly harvesting, we're constantly replanting. And you can kind of gauge based on your family size, based on how often you eat what um, and what you want and how often they eat. Can you see the um, romaine that's up top? So I kind of switch it around because I like my salads to have a different taste. And so I'm planting different variety of lettuce. All right, just meet me around front here. Okay, just keep a good distance for me. All right, so here we have a different type of kale. We have more kale there, um, more collards. And um, I'll just, if you stay, I will just switch it around. Stay up. More lettuce, cilantro, and we're just rotate it there. And look at this beautiful head of lettuce just waiting <laughs> to be harvested as well. So, um, also, I'm gonna get a little closer down there. You can see the reservoir. You just fill that in and kind of gauge. The bigger your plants are, they're kind of like children. When they're smaller, you don't have to use as much water, but as they grow, um, got the tower there. As they grow, they tend to drink more water, but you're not filling it up on a, on a regular basis. You're not coming in here filling up your tower every day. It's more like every two weeks or so. Carter, would you say? Yes, <laughs> um, Again, that's, now these collars have been drinking a lot of water. So I can have to refill this one, even though we're missing a whole lot in harvesting. But these plants are bigger. So we tend, you will just kind of get the hang of it as you're growing and you're kind of know. Of course, so if they're outside, this tower is outside, which it will be in a couple of weeks. You have your hardier vegetables on there, like your tomatoes, um, the squashes, um, melons, all of those hardier plants. They're, as they grow and become adults, is what I like to call them, they just drink more water. Okay. And so, um, also, I wanted to mention there are three ways that you grow. Okay. So, seedlings is the best way to grow. All right, and there are a lot of certified tower um, garden. Watch me, son. Watch me here. <laughs> there are a lot of um, certified tower garden seedling companies. Or if you already know of a um, organic seedling company, you want to oil your seeds, and they grow really easy. All right, um, you can plant from seeds, which is the best. Okay, you can also go to your local nursery. You can buy there as well. Um, and you can do what we call a transplant, but you would have to wash because the tower does not take um, dirt, soil. You would have to rinse and wash off of that. But there are tons of support for your tower garden. I know for um, individuals who um, purchase a tower garden and all reps are different. I actually, some um, you would have access to the national, <laughs> what I say, the tower gardens around the world on Facebook, Okay, growers, you can problem shoot, any problems that you're having about that. There's also corporate support for the tower garden itself as well. So you'll get a lot of support ongoing. You'll see what other people are growing in different areas. Um, so I would like to mention that. So the success of your tower is going to depend on what you're growing, where you're growing is, is different. Okay, your climate is different, indoor and outdoor. So there is a small learning curve, just like when you get children, your first child, you're kind of like, what do I do, <laughs> right? The more children you have, you just kind of, you see, we have three. I actually have one that's rich, uh, rich to go out. But the longer you have that child, you learn to plant ahead. You learn to, um, you just learn what you learn, but the learning curve is very small. I mean, for the most part, you plant the seed, right? As they sprout, you pluck it out and you put it in. I mean, I'm making it seem really easy, but it is compared to 
um, the ground garden. And there are some, some things in between that you have to do. You, so you have to do something. Just like that child, right? When you have that child, you, can, you can't just look at it. So you have to learn. And, um, but the learning curve by far, I mean, if one growing season, you'll be up on it. Um, I'm gonna pause here for any questions, anything I need to, anything else I need to cover. I know my um, team members are gonna let me know if I missed out on anything. Any questions at this point? Are there any questions at this point? Barbara, I do have a question. Um, I know I I have a towel garden myself, and I know that um, some people, you know, are concerned about like having the towel garden if they do have animals and and you know different things like that. Um, even if you do have pets, um, it would it is it easy for do you think it's easy for pets to knock it over or things like that? Okay, yes, yes, I'm gonna be quite honest, but, but when you say knock it over, it's not like a house plant. So if you can step back, I mean, it's, it's very sturdy. Now, but can a cat get up on it and pull it down? The answer is yes, but we do have cages. Um, I don't have any pets, but there are a lot of pets. I mean, if you go on into the towel garden group, you can see the, the cats and some of the animals eating off the towel. They kind of learn, like animals kind of learn what's a no-no. Um, I've seen, um, a, a towel owner kind of, lack for better words, punishing. <laughs> I don't know how you do that with a pet, but they kind of learn. The towel kind of becomes a part of their family where they know, don't go here, don't go there. But I don't want to send a message that, oh, they won't touch it. But as far as turning it over, that would have to be a huge cat, a very huge cat. Mm -hmm. um, we have some people who have, who, when they tower um, farm outside, they have to be strategic if they live near the woods. They have to plant, uh, put up barriers. I had some great melons coming last year and I had a rabbit who bypassed my ground garden and came, I don't know if it, the tower melons were sweeter in smell, but they came around and went out one day and they just cleared the vine, right? And so I learned and, and I have, and I'm no, no, my backyard is not even wooded. I mean, it's far, away some woods nearby but not so you just kind of learn and, and that last year was my eighth year growing so you have to know your area again know your environment if there was some things sometimes people kind of plan for it they say i want my tower here and they actually build barriers in my case i just put some um barrier little feed to keep um, that away so can a cat turn it over no can they get on it and, and probably cause a little trouble? They probably could. Hey, Barbara, just a little clarification. When you were talking about having cages, just so people don't misunderstand, she wasn't saying that we have cages for the animals, but actually the tower garden actually makes a cage that you can put around your tower garden that supports the plants when they get really big, like your tomatoes and anything that has vines. You, you want to say Absolutely. a little bit more about that? Yes, so I'm make sure you're holding it steady, okay? This step. All right, so the towel, actually, if you look here, you will see the little holes that support. I, so I don't need it indoors, but when I take it out, there's a case that goes around and it will fit your towel all the way up, okay? And so for your heavier plants that are growing, they will actually um, support those plants. And in a lot of cases, they were actually also, they kind of create a barrier for some animals. Mm -hmm. But it's a tower garden cage. So it's actually an uh, accessory that will come to your tower. Mm -hmm. So again, make sure you're having that conversation with your rep to kind of figure out um, what your needs are in your growing area. So that's why it's so hard to kind of give people an exact price about the tower. And they say, well, we can always say it starts here. And we like we love to have conversation and kind of talk through. Are you growing indoor? Are you growing outdoor? Do you need the lights? Do you need the cage? How many more accessories? If it's for school, um, how much tonic do you mineral blend? And um, any other accessories? So we try not to we try to do that in that private conversation with you to make sure that you're comfortable with with your purchase and that you get all that you need mm -hmm. to get growing. 
And so how, I do, I do want to mention this, how easy, how fast. And so, you know, from, I planted these last Wednesday, they're already almost little toddlers. So <laughs> by the end of this week, I will be putting them in because as you can see, I got a lot of harvesting growing. And so, I mean, they actually double in size. So you can be eating, if you if you purchase a tower, you can be eating off a tower in approximately two to three weeks. That's really huge in terms of saving and grow, going to your um, local grocery. Hey, Barbara, I think Shay also had a question. Shay, you sure. want to ask your question? I don't remember what it was. Oh, I know. It was, uh, as far as like the, the number of spaces in the tower garden, um, how many would you say there are spaces to grow? Okay, so if you can hold that for me, son. So it's 20, so thank you for asking that. Because this is a larger, what we call an extension kit. So, and then with the extension kit, it grows 28 vegetables total. This is the regular size, if you can step back, son, so you can see this is a little shorter and it grows 20. So you'll get an additional eight with the extension kit. So some people say, well, I don't, I just don't know. You, you have flexibility. You can start with the, just the basic. And as you get through your main growing season, you can add. Well, you can get three months down the road and say, hey, let me get an extension kit. So again, 20 versus 28. Um, normally, just depending on the size of your family, uh, depending on how much, you know, a lot of vegans or vegetarians know they need a lot of veggies, so they automatically start off with the um, extension kit. But again, you can make that decision based on how much you want to grow. I have a question. So is so what can you not grow in it? So there, it sounds like you grow all these root vegetables. Yes. Yeah, so what can you not grow is going to be your rooted vegetables, like your carrots, beets, um, sweet potatoes, um, your... Um, Root, basically uh, ice potato. Now I even grow celery in here, but the celery gets so big, it starts to disassemble the tower. So you got to harvest it, right? Which is another thing. Um, as you can see, the weeks went by, I had a little vacation last week and I came back and I'm like, whoa, I gotta get some of this off of here. So you'll be surprised how quickly it grows. Um, but for, for the most part, any, all of your squashes, from the tower, melons from the tower, celery tower, lettuces, um, chard, um, eggplant, tomatoes of all variety. So pretty much, it, it, and that's actually what I do. In my ground garden, I, I might put some more melons down because we love melon, right? And I put my sweet potatoes in the ground. I put my um, butternut squashes in the ground and on the tower. So sometimes I'm doing a little, Mostly those are the rooted vegetables um, in, in my ground. You can even do strawberries on, on the tower. Am, am I still open? Barbara, I want to, I know I heard you mention something about having the gardens in the school. Um, can you talk just a little bit about uh, what, what the tower garden offers um, for school? Sure. So the tower gardens, have a wow a k through eight grade curriculum for the schools already laid out i mean it's stem approved so any school or even homeschool you can take this project bring in that curriculum already made it's so easy for the teachers and um teachers are using it for growing teaching science they're growing up for teachers coming through their offices are able to eat right out the tower Children can take it home. Um, it's just a really good, per when I say perfect fit for both homeschool and individuals who are in um, a regular schools and private schools, um, retirement homes. It, it's just a perfect fit for that. Because one thing I found when I do consultation with the schools is that they have a, a magical teacher who kind of grew up like myself who knew all about garden. They come in and they do the high ride raise gardens and they do this and then they leave. And then the teachers that come behind are like, we're not gonna work that. Or you have somebody very inexperienced and they kind of get overgrown. 
until you just kind of have that other, you know, with the tower is very given, forgiven. So, you know, if you, anybody, you can go online, you can get the tower, you can get ongoing support. So if a teacher leaves, you know, and a lot of times, um, I know in some of my schools, they just, we just, the teacher just choose who wants to have it. You know, it might be a science teacher, but not necessarily special ed. A lot of our special ed um, classrooms, the children, because they're on medication, they have um, certain disabilities, they can't go out and do that. They might can go out a little bit, um, but they, they can't be in inclement weather in terms of, so they kind of actually get the short end of the deal in terms of those. Again, I'm not dismissing a ground garden, but I'm just kind of giving you the pros and cons. So we've had schools that do both. Okay, they actually keep a track when they're, they're teaching both aeroponics as well as the ground because they know, you know, there are benefits to both. But if you don't have that manpower um, for um, that physical labor, you're gonna, uh, it's just gonna go by the wayside, something that you can't continue. All right, so I have about 7.46. I'm gonna ask my son to do the, cam um, the camera. He can remove that and I'll come back here. All right. And I can answer any additional questions. Are there any more questions in the chat? All right, so to one, I'm gonna let you wrap up. Um, Barbara, I think Lisa was about to say something. Oh, go ahead, Lisa. No, I was just going to say if we wanted to answer that question about uh, people in apartments, uh, you know, nursing homes, things like that, that just have, uh, you know, small uh, living quarters, you know, this is obviously can fit on a patio or the home is obviously for the home and it's a smaller unit uh, yeah. than the larger ones. The flex are the ones that Barbara just showed us. So um, yeah, so never fear that um, people uh, all over uh, can do, uh, you know, a corner of the house uh, in a bedroom, in a basement, uh, things like that. I've had two tower gardens, flex tower gardens for eight years like Barbara. And um, I do one in the winter down in the basement. And then uh, I can't wait until uh, I can go outside with my two here in St. Louis, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, sometime mid-April. So anyway, but yeah. Yes, just and because it's vertical, I very little space. I say, if you can hug somebody, you can get a tower in that, in that place. In that hey, Barbara, place. this is Shay. Hey, um, also, as far as like being able to move the tower garden around, isn't there like a, a base or something that is available also? That's correct. So they, with the tower home, it's actually a built-in base with dolly wheels, but with the flex that I just showed you, the, you will have to, it's an accessory. The dolly is a, an accessory, but we have some, some folks that have been very um, um, strategic and creative. They have dollies and they have made, made their own, um, depending on, again, that conversation would need to kind of be like, what is your space like? Um, if, if you don't, if you feel like it's, you're in a space where you can kind of move it around, but then some people are like, ah, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to go through that, but you know, you still have that option. So if you're in a place, um, if you're outdoors primarily and you're never going to bring it indoors and you have a cool place, I would say not on concrete where it's going to kind of boil your water all summer, um, but on some cool surfaces. I mean, people make it work. We have seen tower gardens on boats. They're in restaurants. They're in mm -hmm. high rises. Um, they're very, very flexible. Very flexible. Thanks for that question. Yeah, I just want to make a comment. I've got a, uh, a client in Arkansas, and they are a, um, a agricultural farming company by trade, and they actually have about 10 or so on their property that they use as part of training for new people that come in that go out to different parts of the world to work. So um, I've seen those. They, actually, they had them before I knew that they had them. So <laughs> I missed out on that. But yeah, they have about 10 or so that they use regularly throughout the year to be able to use on campus for their employees, as well as to be able to train people on how to do the, that type of farming or that type of uh, growing 
you know, when they're out and don't have the other resources that might be available. Mm -hmm. It wide, it's a life changer. And that's the thing. Well, actually with my son, I think he was born after we got the towels. Well, he only knew the towels for a while when we start the ground and it was, it was all fun. He was taking pictures when we pull in, right, Carter? And then when I say, hey, we got to pull all these weeds. <laughs> and he goes, I just want to go in there with a towel guard. And I'm like, okay, so you just can't take all the pictures. But he he stays in a towel. And I wanted to interview Carter, but our time is well spent. But um, Carter, what do you, I will just ask him this quick question. What do you love most about the towel guard as an eight-year-old? It gets you healthy. And see your face on move it over just like, okay. There you go. Oh, sorry, it, it helps you get healthy and it's really good for your body because it helps you with diseases like cancer, all sorts of other diseases, and the most thing about it. <laughs> It's healthy too, so you don't gotta go out there and be sweating, <laughs> do all the work. You can stay inside if you want to. You can grow your own garden. And so, how much work? Thank you. How much work did you have to do outside? Hold it. Hold the camera a little still for us. How much work? When you're helping me with the tower outdoors, how much work is it for a kid? What all do you have to do, if I can ask you that? Well, it is a lot of work, but eventually it's all work for vegetables. Okay. So, but my question is, Carter, yes, when I, I send you outside to do something to the tower, what normally do you have to do with the tower outdoors for? Well... Yeah. It's not a trick question, son. <laughs> you mean the towel garden or? Yeah, the towel garden when you're outside. Not the seeds, I'm sorry. When you're outside and I say, hey, go and do, what's the most you have to do with the towel garden outside? Well, you have to make sure it's clean, you know, so it won't get any dead roots or anything. You have to pick vegetables so they won't overgrow it. Okay. And you have to make sure so you can't just be grown it just to be grown it <laughs> you have to really experience the real child garden and how it feels so so when you have to do the, fill up the tower is that a lot of work or what i know you and your sister fight a lot at <laughs> play after but when when you have to do the fill up the tower is that a lot of work for you Actually, it's not. It's not. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I'm not going to talk to you any longer. I know I asked you a lot of questions. And I, I didn't want to put words. No, that's okay. All right. Well, thank you, Carter. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, you ready for me to wrap it up, Barbara? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for being with us tonight and just sticking in there and asking your questions. And thank you so much, Barbara, and your assistant, Carter for showing us, taking us into your home and showing us your tower gardens. They're just beautiful and really makes me excited to get my stuff ordered and planned, um, planned out um, for the spring. And now is the perfect time to be doing that, to get your tower garden ordered and be thinking about what you wanna grow and get your seedlings going if you're gonna start from, um, from seeds. So um, thank you very much. Um, so how do you get started? You know, What's your next steps? Well. One thing would be to become a Juice Plus customer. If you don't already know about the capsules or the chews, you might want to add more whole food nutrition to your diet. I know for our family, uh, we've been consuming the Juice Plus products for 18 years, and it's really been foundational for our health. Um, secondly, you know, become a Tower Garden customer. Considering purchasing a Tower Garden, um, get with the person who invited you. Um, and let them, you know, price it out for you and just go through, like Barbara said, you know, what all you're going to need. Um, you might want to consider um, becoming a family, what we call a family rebater. And, um, you know, for just $52 a year, 
you can do that and actually save yourself a little money on your products and also are able to then share it with your friends and family. And our company actually has some special promotions going on right now where you can get $100 as a thank you pretty quickly. So, you know, you could use that towards your tower garden if you wanted to. So just want to mention that. Um, but once again, just get with the person who invited you. Thank you all for being on the call tonight. And uh, we just look forward to answering more of your questions. And, um, and thanks again, Barbara and, and Lisa and Tamara and Carter for sharing. So, You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, good night. thank you. Good night. Good night.